First of all, guys, I'd like to thank the Rams organization, you know, first and foremost, the current, current coaches, players, uh, for all their support throughout this process. Uh, the Rams are a world-class organization. Uh, I've been blessed to work here for three years, starting in 2018, and, and went to a Super Bowl in our, in our first year here, and, and that was just such an amazing experience. Uh, my job's not done here yet. Uh, we've got a lot of games to win, hopefully get on to another Super Bowl, uh, but just such a great experience I've had here so far. Especially want to thank Coach Sean McVay, uh, giving me an opportunity to coach at this level and, and to learn under his leadership and, and expertise has just been such an unbelievable opportunity for me. Uh, he's the best coach in the NFL, hands down, I believe, and, and I owe him so much. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank Coach Stoops and Athletic Director uh, Barnhart for the, you know, at the Kentucky administration, excuse me, with just such an incredible opportunity to bring me here uh, to Big Blue Nation and, and get this thing done. Just uh, couldn't be more happy. Uh, you know, I've always said that it would take really a special job and opportunity for me to leave the Rams. A couple of things have come up the last few years, but uh, being the offensive coordinator at the University of Kentucky is one of those special positions that I just had to take. That had, there was no chance to be able to turn this thing down and um, just so ex so excited to be under the leadership and vision of Coach Stoops, the caliber of players that I'll be able to coach uh, and mentor and be around and learn from every day. It's just such an unbelievable opportunity, as I've mentioned before, and uh, I couldn't be more thankful to be here on this call with you guys today. All right, thanks, Coach. Well, our first question is from John Hale. Hey, Coach, John Hale with the Louisville Courier Journal newspaper. I'm curious, how has your offensive philosophy maybe evolved since the last time you were calling plays in college based on what you've learned with Coach McVay and the Rams the last three years? I think that, you know, coming to the NFL, it was always something that I had always watched NFL football, you know, coaching in college. And, and, and you try to get some of these tits and, 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 you know, tidbits and things like that that you can really pick up. And I believe that truly marrying the run in the pass is something that, I've learned that it is such an advantage in winning edge for us here. And the guys that have just been able to, we've run the football effectively, but all of our play actions and keepers and movements and things like that are, are directly married to the run game that we were able to utilize here. So I believe that that true marriage uh, and playing with different tempos in and out of the huddle at times, I know that's a foreign world, a foreign language maybe in the SEC, but, you know, maybe playing in and out of the huddle, get, you know, getting some, different tempos going and um, just being able to be the, be quarterback friendly. Everything starts with the quarterback, but also, you know, it also starts up front and we're going to be able to run the football. And that's something that Sean wants to do on a week to week basis. It's part of our core philosophy is running the football and uh, continue to, you know, I plan to continue to do so at, at Kentucky and, but truly marrying the run in the past, being able to put pressure on the defense and make them defend every blade of grass. Nick Roush. Nick Roush, Kentucky Sports Radio. Liam, you mentioned in your, your opening statement um, that it took a unique opportunity. Uh, I mean, it is a pretty sweet gig coaching the Super Bowl for the Rams. What made this, uh, what, what made Kentucky the one that ultimately convinced you to, to make the move? First and foremost, I, you know, it's the SEC, right? It, it's, if you're not talking about the NFL, you're talking about the SEC in terms of level of play. And, that was something I vote. It was always my dream really to get to the national football league in some way, you know, shape or form. And, and that happened and I've had an unbelievable experience, but I believe uh, the uniqueness, the unique situation that it is, is they've been, they've won a lot of football games, you know, Kentucky, we've won a lot of football games. They can run the football, have to improve the pass game. I think that's something I can help with, but also Talking with Coach Stoops, he had this vision from the beginning in terms of what he was looking for, and he didn't stray from it at all. And to me, that speaks volumes about that kind of person. And my dialogue with him is, it has just been amazing. Everything he has said that was going to happen has happened in, in terms of this process. And to me, that speaks more about X's and O's and things like that. This guy is a stand-up guy that I believe um, – I would love to work for, and I work for an amazing human being, not only coach right now, and I believe I'll be doing the same in Kentucky. And to me, that was really the, you know, the selling point was, who am I going to come work for and work with? Hey, the student athletes will be amazing. They're going to do what you're going to ask them to do as long as you show loyalty and, and give respect to them first and foremost. So I, I'm truly blessed to be in this, in this position, but it all started with Coach Stoops. Derek Terry. 
Hey, Liam. Uh, Derek here with the Cat's Paws. Mark was talking about some of the references uh, that he had for you, and they were all good, and he felt like he could trust those people. So I was wondering on your end, whenever you were making the decision to, to take this job, who were some of the people that you leaned on for, for advice? Well, I, I was blessed to, to have a situation where, you know, our offensive line coach, Aaron Cromer, um, is, is close with Coach Stoops. Um, you know, they vacation together. So there was a connection there. Coach, coach Aaron Cromer is really the first guy that kind of put this thing together for me in terms of, hey, this is something that could potentially happen. You know, was able to use him as a character reference for Coach Stoops on my end. And also John Cooley, our, our uh, defensive quality control coach, was a graduate assistant at Kentucky, I believe in 2016. So I had a couple firsthand experiences with not only Coach Stoops, but also the university, the, 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 the Lexington, the area, Big Blue Nation, all those things were uh, at my disposal. And, and my agents did a phenomenal job of also doing some research on the situation. But uh, I had some great, great people to be able to talk to that had firsthand experience of the place. And, um, and, and that made things a lot easier for me. John Clay. Uh, yeah, coach, it's John Clay with the Lexington Herald Leader, uh, the newspaper in Lexington. Uh, you mentioned about the SEC. Uh, you know, some people are going to say, well, he's 35 years old. He's never called a play in Division One football. Obviously, the SEC is a very tough league. Uh, what do you feel like has prepared you, and do you feel prepared to be able to take over this position? Yeah, first and foremost, ton of respect for the SEC, obviously. I mean, it's what we turn when we turn on film to, to watch college ball and see what guys are doing in the in, in in college football that we maybe we can take some bits and pieces from uh Steve Sarkeesian or you know last year Joe Joe Brady and some things like that. we're watching the SEC so it's it's a you know conference we have a ton of respect for I personally do growing up a football kid but um I call I believe if you you know you call plays I don't know if the um where it exists, it will really change. The atmosphere sure will change, you know, and I've learned so much more from being a play caller uh, at Maine. So I believe that the, the players will do what they ask you to do if they respect you and they want to play and, and, and they have, you have juice and you bring energy. Um, technique and fundamentals will we'll have really good football coaches that'll be at Kentucky. They're already there, but I believe that this system is extremely friendly to this style of play that the SEC is run the football play action move the quarterback spot move the launch spot because the defensive line is so dynamic at that level as it is here I believe so much of this game here in the NFL carries over to the SEC with obviously some unique you know formations the field's a little bit different right a couple of things in the in the college game that I'll have to adjust to going back to the game um, but I do believe that this system uh, and our style of play matched with Coach Stoops' philosophy of what he wants the offense to look like will be a really good match for, for this to, for the conference. Josh Moore. Hey, Liam. Welcome. I'm also with the Lexington Herald Leader. Um, with As far as the recruiting piece, uh, for, for you kind of getting back in that game, is that something you look forward to? And have you talked with uh, Vince Merrow, the recruiting coordinator, much, and how, how maybe you'll fit into that equation? Yeah, actually, Vince reached out to me just uh, not too long ago. So, and I've only heard unbelievable things from him about him and his experience being a you know top-notch recruiter in, in the country. Uh, I'm I'm jacked up to get back to recruiting. Um, both my parents were teachers. My father was a coach. My grandfather was a coach. And really, you get into this profession, or at least I did, to try to make an impact on kids' lives in some way, shape, or form. You know, try to have some sort, have them take something that you can maybe give them along the way that helps them become better human beings along the way. And um, that's why I got into this profession. I love the X's and O's. I love football, but I do miss some of those relationships, true relationships of impacting 18 to 22 year old kids that are at such an important time in their lives that need some of that, you know, mentorship and, and, and guidance and, and just being a friend and, and just being somebody that can be there for them. And I miss that part. So recruiting, I believe being a 35 year old guy, I'm actually closer in age to some of them than I probably am to some other older coaches in the country. So I believe that can only help me in terms of walking into a household and being able to be honest and, and be myself 
in terms of, hey, this is what I'm all about. This is what Kentucky football represents. And I'm a representation of Kentucky football. And I believe I can uh, do that to the best of my abilities. Howard Herman. Howard. Howard. Hey, congratulations. Uh -huh. um, can you wrap your arms around the journey from Rhode Island to McGurk? And now you're going to be in the SEC. Can you uh, just your thoughts on that? Yeah, I just got goosebumps. You know, I just got goosebumps thinking about it and just seeing your face, man. It's been so long, you know, covering, just being covered by you. And, and it's been a long time, but it, I, I can't really wrap my head around it right now. It's, it's been, um, it's something that always I, I dreamt of and, and, and foresaw out of my career as you move forward. I like, you know, I always wanted to play at the next level. Didn't get that opportunity. Had a great, you know, had a great college experience. And I always thought that that was kind of going to be it, but I knew I would coach. Um, and once you get into the profession, you just, you never know how it's going to really end up and sell how many of the pieces. And I've just been under Mark Whipple and Phil Estes at Brown and some of the other guys that have really paved the way for me as a coach to get the opportunity to come to the Rams was just like, Oh my goodness, this is, phenomenal right and then now to be able to be coming to the one of the most you know the, the top division co conference in college football at a place like Kentucky um it's just a dream come true you know it's a dream come true I've been uh my you know my dad is my best friend and, and he's so excited for this opportunity as is the rest of my family but to put this thing in perspective to have so many UMass guys reach out to me over the last 24 hours um, to have Brad White, the defensive coordinator there, be a high school rival of mine. And it's just so many pieces that come together are just uh, make this truly that much more special. Kent Spencer. Yeah, Liam, you said the offense, you know, everything kind of starts with the quarterback. Um, what do you know about the quarterbacks that you're going to inherit, you know, at Kentucky? And also you mentioned the fit. How vital was it for you, like, was it crucial that you and, and Mark Stoops were on the same page with what you guys and, and what you want to do offensively? That, that was the, the most important part, I believe. I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily about plays. It's definitely more about players. We all know that. It's not X's and O's, it's G.I. Joe's. So fitting out in terms of, hey, what, what do we want to look like? What, do we, what, do, what pieces do we have here in place? And I believe that there's pieces in place in terms of the quarterback position. I'm not too positive. You know, I have seen a couple of the guys, you know, I know that uh, the incumbent quarterback is going to, you know, more of a running quarterback and things like that. And got the Auburn transfer quarterback, Bo Allen, got a couple guys that I've seen play. And I believe that, Hey, it's not about them fitting to, to this system. It's about me fitting to their skill sets. And I believe that for every position, I can't come in and say, Hey, this is what we're going to do. And, I'm not going to budge. You need to fit into what I want you to do. No, no, no. It's about personnel and trying to find what these guys do best. And I, when I met with Coach Stoops on the interview, they did so many good things over the last couple of years, specifically running the football. And that's not going to change. I'll run the same plays, the same concepts, things that they've done really well. Um, it's just about, hey, how can we tweak some of this stuff and incorporate some of these concepts from the Rams to really, hey, detail up some of the pass game, the marriage of the run in the past, but also they've done some phenomenal things. Their O-line was so well coached by an unbelievable person from what I understand and um, just such an unfortunate situation. But you see their O-line, they play their butts off. They're competitive. The run game, running backs are tough. So there's exciting pieces that um, I need to fit my plan to, not the other way around. Don Hale. Liam, you mentioned Brad White there. I can't imagine there have been many Power 5 football programs in the country with two coordinators from Rhode Island before. What is the relationship there? How, how long have you known him? What, what is that? How about that? I mean, there, there's not – I think there's about three or four in NFL or Division One football. You know, I mean, there's, there's not too many. So, honestly, it's, a, it's pretty funny. Brad and I don't really truly know each other personally. Like, I, don't, I didn't have his phone number until today. Or, and, um, but I remember what jersey number Brad White wore. Or two of them. I remember his big neck roll that he wore at Bishop Hendrick in high school. So, I was about a – I think I was a eighth grader when he was a senior at, Hendrick, at Bishop Hendrick. And I was at, went to LaSalle Academy, which is 
two rival private Catholic high schools in Rhode Island. And I just always respected him as a player. I was like, you know, this kid's a stud, you know, he's a stud and went on to play at Wake Forest. I followed his career onto the Colts and Air Force. And so I've always followed him, but we have never truly connected um, on a personal or professional level. But I've just unbel heard unbelievable things about him from everybody that's uh, I've been able to talk to. It's just small world, man. You know, it's such a small world, how these things work out. And um, I'm just really excited to get to work with him. Mark Story. Hey, Leah, Mark Story, also from the Lexington Herald Leader. A couple of things. What do you value in quarterback play? When you're evaluating a quarterback, you know, what are the first things you look at? And secondly, how much uh, quarterback run game do you envision uh, using at Kentucky? First and foremost, is the kid a competitor? You know, does he just absolutely cannot stand to lose? Because everybody likes to win, right? Everybody loves winning. But if the kid will just compete his tail off on every snap, don't lose, don't concede unless, hey, it's a smart play, let's throw it away. But it's more about, hey, is this kid a competitor? Can he play hoops? Can he walk onto the basketball court and be a distributor and be able to play, make plays? And does he walk onto any field or anything that he does and just not want to lose? I think that first and foremost is something that when you're around a guy like Jared Goff and, and some of the other guys I've coached, but specifically Jared, and he missed a throw. I mean, he, you're ticked off, you know, and, and things like that. I want him to be able to compete every single day, every single drill, things like that. And then obviously be able to throw and catch, right? It doesn't need, he doesn't have to have a big arm. Accuracy is the most important. We can always fix the feet. So we always work on his footwork. It all starts from the ground up with the quarterback in terms of footwork, how to be able to throw the football and obviously his mental capacity, right? I mean, you want the, you'd like for your quarterback to be able to, you know, handle some things, maybe some audibles, things like that to be able to, you know, the capacity to be able to handle those things. And um, in terms of, uh, I just feel like that's probably what we're looking for. To be able to run the football, the more athletic he can be, the better. I mean, if the quarterback can run and be able to make plays, we will absolutely incorporate quarterback run game. I believe that it's important at, at, in the college level as it is, it causes everybody in the NFL fits, as you guys can see on Sundays with Lamar Jackson last night, it causes people fits. Um, so if that's what we have and that's the best guy, we will absolutely do some of those things as long as it's in alignment with what Coach Stoops wants and, and, and foresees out of his offense. But ideally, we'd like to find somebody that can is a true passer first, but can also extend plays and, and make some plays, um, you know, out of the pocket or, you know, extend plays on third and 10. I, I call a play for man and it's zone and well, shoot, it doesn't matter. The kid's just going to make a play and find a completion and move the chains and be situationally aware. So it really depends on the talent and what we have and who really uh, shows up to be the guy in that room. But um, all avenues are open in my opinion. Nick Roush. Liam, you're going to be with the Rams through until the season ends. How, what's the, going to be the process of getting to know uh, the team and, until you do make the move to Lexington? Probably a lot like this, I would think, you know, I mean, I think probably get on Zoom, get on some phone calls. I mean, I've already started to plan out some things in terms of staff getting on some Zoom calls, have some staff meetings to in, start to, intro, to introduce the offense. Um, and, and that's really if I have to fly out there and come out and be able to do some things, maybe I'll have to do that. I, you know, that's something I'll work out with with Coach Stoops. But um, it, it, these are different times. Right. It is a totally different time. But um, I believe that this is an avenue that we're going to we all use and, and it's our form of communication right now. So uh, for the most part right now, I'm sure those things will be done over Zoom. But um, being able to meet the players is, is obviously what I'm most excited about. You know, I love being able to get together staff. I've met some of those guys already, but really being able to meet some of these players, uh, get into the quarterback room, jump on a zoom with those guys, get on, you know, with the offense, the entire offense unit. I know some of those guys, you know, they don't go back to school until about January 26th or so. So, um, you know, hopefully, I'd like to be back for that. Hopefully we're in the Super Bowl, but um, in, in the meantime, you know, just to be able to use some of these, uh, the technology that we have at our, at our disposal to, to get some of those conversations and dialogue going. Aaron Gershon. Liam, Aaron Gershon, Big Blue Insider. You guys are obviously looking to improve the pass game, but how important is it to maintain the success uh, UK has had running the ball the last couple of years, specifically with some of the running backs who are expected to get back? 
It's so important. It all starts there. I mean, the, the quarterback, we all know, I mean, I believe is the most important position in sports. I believe that. But when you're looking at an off at an offense and, and who to really protect and, and you want to gear your skill sets towards these guys is it's the quarterback and the offensive line. If you look at some of the, you know, being able to run the football, put your, put your offense in good position, run good plays in a smart looks, whether that's with zone read, whether that's with RPOs or whether that's with an audible system, try to put your players in the best chance, to, you know, opportunity to be successful and I believe they've done a phenomenal job at that. I mean, just uh, you see the physicality up front. Uh, you see the backs making plays. It's a sound uh, run game that they've had for the last couple of years. And, and that's something I don't plan on changing. Hey, maybe we jump on under center a couple of times here and there um, and, and, and run a, maybe diversify the run game a little bit in terms of some of the things that I've learned here. Uh, at, at, with the Rams, but I do believe it's going to all start with, Hey, we're going to, we're, when we snap out of the huddle, the first thing the defensive line, the defense sees is the offensive line attacking the line of scrimmage when you break the huddle. And, and if that tempo, and that's something that's, you know, we have respect for, and we appreciate, and we know there's a winning edge for us. I believe that we'll have some success. I think you caught on me, Susan. You're muted. Um, the your reputation as a player, uh, quite a you know a college resume there. I don't know how much people you know bring that up, but I assume that's something your quarterbacks that you'll inherit will be pretty excited to see. You know, you know, just those numbers and that kind of production. I mean, as Howard can maybe attest to, I was pretty deadly within like thirty. And as you start to move past that, I, I started to lose a little bit of uh, juice on the arm. But I, I was so lucky to be coached by Don Brown, who's the defensive coordinator at Michigan. And uh, Victor Cruz was my college roommate. So uh, I had some really good players around that, that made things easy and, and that made things really fun. We won a lot of games, lost in the national championship game in Chattanooga, at, in Chattanooga against Appalachian State. So I played down in Kentucky now. I mean, that area, you know, that Chattanooga, Tennessee, Kentucky, Midwest area. I played down there, so um, didn't have a lot of success. But uh, I do believe that it helps. You know, I believe it helps when you can um, have respect for your for your coach. Because at the end of the day, as a player, right, you have to look at yourself. You always want to play for yourself. You play for your teammates, you know, family. You play for your coaches. I do believe when you look at your coach and you know he's been there before and he's done what you're doing and what you're going through, in terms of being a student athlete at this level, I believe it, it helps bridge the gap. You know, I, help, I do believe it helps bridge the gap in terms of building relationships and, and, and continuing that ongoing communication and dialogue that will ultimately lead to more wins and championships. Um, I can still throw it a little bit. You know, I can still throw it a little bit, but, um, you know, in terms of just, uh, I feel like that can only help, you know, in terms of uh, standing back there. I've stood back there before and made throws, and there's some instances where, a quarterback may make a may not make a throw or make a throw and some well why did he do this? this guy's wide open well when you stood back there and you can see it from that lens a lot of times it helps the quarterback oh, oh yeah he's he understands and it helps build that trust in terms of okay he's not going to just you know get after me when I miss a wide open player because that might not have been part of the progression that may not have been part of it it might he might not have been able to see it things like that I feel like that's my job to to help bridge that gap and open that line of communication. Jeff Drummond. Hey Liam, congratulations and uh, welcome to Kentucky. Thank you. I'm, I'm curious, play action has come up a, a lot between uh, you and Mark Stoops uh, during our talks today. And uh, having watched the Rams a little bit and what you guys have done with you know Higby and uh, in the past, mm -hmm. I think you guys threw to the backs a little bit more maybe than what you're doing now, but how, how big a part of that is, is having, you know, tight ends and, and running backs that can, can catch and make some things happen in your offense. It's huge. Like you said, I mean, it, it's a big deal. Higby, Gerald Everett, you know, we got Cam Akers going right now. They're a vital part of this whole thing, not just in the run game. Like you mentioned, the play action pass, the screen game will be huge. The screen game off of the play action pass, all of that stuff and trying to get the, the ball into the hands as many players as we can. I mean, it's great to have skill on the outside. We love, the, you know, love those guys. Get the ball into your playmaker's hands as much as possible. But we all know that there's mismatches, right? There's matchups that you can take advantage of 
that aren't just out there, you know, cornerback on a receiver. Well, Hey, let's get a linebacker on a tight end. Let's get a, well, let's displace the back and get him matched up on a tight on a, a linebacker, excuse me, being able to utilize all of the matchups. The NFL is such a matchup league. You know, when you play man to man, you get matchups all over the place and you have to be able to win one on ones at this level. And I believe that's at editing level. So to be able to utilize the tight ends and some of the keeper game, the bootlegs, uh, utilizing the backs in the screen game and in some of the drop back game, whether it be an empty or displacing the back some, I believe that can definitely help the offense and be able to get the ball into some of the playmakers hands. I've seen some of these tight ends on tape and I've seen the backs on tape a little bit playmakers for sure. Some guys that you can distribute the football. I believe it was against the Arizona Cardinals two weeks ago. Um, we, we had nine players touch the catch the ball the other nights, you know, against the Cardinals. So be able to distribute the football. The quarterback should act like a point guard, not just throwing the receivers. Let's get the ball into some of our playmakers hands. John Clay. Yeah, Liam, I was curious. So what's it been like working for Coach McVay? And are there one or two things specifically that you have picked up from him uh, during your time there in L.A.? I mean, first and foremost, when you step into the building, you feel the energy, right? It's a place that you truly love coming to work for, work at every day. I mean, it, you don't get into this profession to get, you know, a pat on the butt, right? And to hear somebody say, you know, you're doing a great job. That's not why we do this, right? It's not why we do it. But it is nice to hear it. And, and that's something that I feel he does such an amazing job at is making his coaches feel appreciated, genuinely. And, and that's just, uh, he, he knows everybody's name in the building, the chefs, the, you know, the, the cleaning staff, the academic, everybody. He knows everybody in the building's name, calls everybody on a first name basis, tries to, you know, really ingrate, you know, get himself into everything that's going on in this building. And he has so much to do. He's our offense coordinator. He does all these things. He knows the defense and he just, he's different. There's no question. He's a different breed, but he's a, he's an unbelievable person. And that's where to me, I've learned that, you know, this, this profession when you're in college or a place I've been before is, you know, discipline, hard work, all that stuff is extremely necessary. But hey, let's have open dialogue. You know, this isn't my way or the highway dictatorship stuff. Let's collaborate on this thing. What's best for us as an offense to be able to collaborate on and do together. And, and that's the type of thing. He gives our players a ton of autonomy. Hey, what do you want to call this? How do you want to run that? You feel more comfortable doing it this way. Now, these guys are pros. So some of that stuff is they've been doing for years, but I do believe when your players have ownership over what they're doing, whether it's conceptually, fundamentally, or hey, just maybe coming up with a name of a play, they're going to want to run that play a little bit harder and do their job to the best of their ability, maybe just a little bit more because there's that much more invested on their side, not just hey, this is what to do, go do it. Being able to collaborate, all of us, everybody in it together, uh, and just treating people the right way, you know, really energy, excitement, juice, but also it's not fake on, on his, you know, from him, it's real. And um, it, it's the atmosphere that he creates. We all feel the same way. And I hope to be able to bring some of that, you know, energy and enthusiasm to Kentucky. Okay, we have time for three more. We're going to do Nick, then Terry, then Josh. So Nick, we'll start with you. Nick Roush. Sorry, I didn't mean to have my hand up there. Okay, then we'll go to Josh. Well, Derek, did you have a question? Yeah, I do. Uh, okay. Liam, Mark said the two positions that really needed to focus on uh, in the offense is quarterback and wide receiver, and obviously you've coached both those spots with the Rams. Just how much do you think that experience will help you uh, once you get to Lexington? Uh, I'll tell you what, I mean, being a quarterback my entire life, I've only played quarterback really as a player only coached it, you know, in my previous tenure uh, at other places. But when I got here and got into the receiver's room, uh, the level of respect, number one, that I learned to have for those guys, especially the guys that we have here in this building uh, that are so selfless, able to run, you know, run block, screens, things like that. 
Um, I've learned so much technique from Eric Yarbrough, our, our receivers coach. He's just a phenomenal football coach, great person. Just being able to learn some of the techniques and, and, and little things that help these guys maybe get open, give them a little bit of a tip on how to beat man coverage or how to settle versus zone coverage. Just little details that I've learned along the way in terms of these last couple of years, coaching some of these special players that, that we have here in Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Josh Reynolds, Van Jefferson, had Brandon Cooks before. I mean, th these are guys that I was learning from every single day, things that made them great. I was able to jot down on notepad. So things, some of those things that I'm able to take in terms of, hey, how can we make this play and this concept or this player just that much better in terms of just, hey, let's tighten up the details and technique and fundamentals. Um, and then obviously being in the quarterback room, being with an, a, a Pro Bowl quarterback like Jared Goff. I mean, working with Kevin O'Connell, who's, who who's our offensive coordinator, um, just continuing to advance in terms of, hey, what's the quarterback's preparation every week? What are his week, you know, daily notes for practice? You know, give him notes every single day. How do you do in practice? What are the things that we can improve on? What's the area of emphasis of the, of the day? Red zone, third down, get back on track. What are these situations that we need to prepare the quarterback for every single day in his preparation for Saturday? I believe that my preparation as a coach has only, you know, expanded over the last year working with the quarterbacks, but also seeing what it really entails to, to play quarterback at this level. Okay, last question is with Josh Moore. Liam, I, I asked this of recruits and players that have been through the program a lot and, you know, about their like impressions of Kentucky, you know, kind of growing up and how the program has evolved. For you, what what is your just, what do you want to achieve as far as getting, you know, you know, contributing to that evolution? Because I think that's kind of the thing that a lot of fans want to, um, see happen. I mean, I grew up watching college football and, and football in general, right? And, and I've read all of Mike Leach's books, Hal Mummy, Tim Couch, Dare Lorenz, and some of these guys I've watched and, and I've emulated Tim Couch. Like, I, I wanted to be Tim Couch. Like, I really loved him. And, and, and just some of the – being a part of all these former unbelievable quarterbacks and running backs that have led the SEC in rushing and, and just being a part of something that has such rich tradition – um, and, and you look at the way college football is going and, and you see the facility, the brand new, you know, the facility built in 2016. I mean, some of those things that you're just like, man, this is a special place in terms of what they're willing to do for the student athlete. And um, that's our jobs is to try to make an impact on the student athletes lives. And I believe that just really coaching in the SEC against some of the respecting the opponents that we play. Uh, you know, I have a ton of respect for all those guys and watching them as a kid growing up. So um, I, I was the type of kid that watched more college football and wanted to be more into the college world than I did the pro game. My dad was a college football coach. So that was really where my passion was. Uh, my grandfather played at Boston College, was a captain there. So everything was about college football. And um, I, I knew once I went to the NFL that I would eventually come back at some point. It was just a matter of the right situation. So um, just being a part of just listening to Coach Stoops, the way he interacts with his staff and, and the way he has interacted with me so far, I believe just coming to a place like Lexington that has unbelievable just sports, right? Just a sports place. Uh, I know, you know, Calipari is a UMass guy, shout out. And, and just being a part of Lexington and, and, and Kentucky and just being a part of all the the juice and enthusiasm. I mean, I've, been, I've looked at a couple of houses, there's blue everywhere and curtains are blue and things like that. I'm like, man, these people are crazy, but it's awesome. Like, this is great. Um, you just, you can't be more excited about uh, joining a place that truly is passionate about their university.